have told it all you guys. Way up, way huge. And a hole uh, right there. And, and when I, I, I eased up to it, and uh, I saw a huge foot wrapped up with stuff coming back like this. So I got a grenade off. He went out the other side. So that was the end of that. And uh, the sergeant came down and uh, uh, he thanked me. And uh, then we had another. I got a. I got a sword uh, that I. I had for a long time. I got it uh, uh, at the end of the fighting. Uh, one, one of the actual uh, oh, his picture was in there. Uh, actual commanders of uh, Okinawa, and uh, there was two other guys with him. Uh, but uh, Kunishi was the name of it, uh, and uh, we saw him go in, and uh, they had to be taken care of. So I come up with a jab sword. That's it. Do you know, do you remember the name of the ship you were on? Oh, I was on about eight of them. On about eight. Uh, uh, the, uh, the one that uh, I remember most is the, uh, uh, we called it uh, the, the uh, pepper. We had a name for it. It was, uh, uh, they didn't have enough uh, bunks and stuff for the men. So many men. The USS Boutwell, that was it. We called it the, the skull. The skull. <laughs> and uh, they had to, had to put ropes up in the overhead and put tuba boards in and then put the bunks up on top of that and get all over the whole other part of the ship. The guys, they, they get a hold and, and pull themselves up to their bed and sleep up there. Wow. And we were all so mashed together, we had to walk across the other guys. Uh, across his uh, uh, beds, uh, cots, all the way across. If you had a bed on the other side of the, against the, the bulkhead, uh, you had to go across all these guys' beds, and most of them kept pretty quiet. They didn't say much because it's the only way you could get to your bed <laughs> is, uh, is to crawl over their bed. So uh, that, that's about the Batwell of the USS Thomas Jeff. Jefferson, uh, and I uh, can't think of it uh, right now. I can't, okay. I can't think of what they were, but uh, they, uh, the the military was did a fine job in every respect, and uh, I never saw anybody bug out, and. Uh, My buddy that I helped from, uh, I was telling you about, I was on the range with, uh, he made it through. He was a, a runner for the 7th seventh, seventh Marines, and he would take off on foot and go get his job, deliver the message, and uh, he made it safely back, and I was glad of that. How did you feel after the war, like coming Relieved. home? Relieved. <laughs> Happy, yeah. I want to. I got to come home and see my folks and everybody and friends and and uh, they kid me about where I've been. You know, and it was. Uh, I, I went, went out of San Diego most of the time. I was uh, I was signed up at the uh, uh, main hotel in uh, San San Francisco. Uh, what's the main hotel in San Francisco? Anybody know? San Francis? Uh, anyway, the St. Francis is where we, about a hundred of us were, had to hold our arm up and, and this is before. Uh, they were filled up down at the, at the base with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, soldiers, soldier marines, and uh, so they swore us in. They said we'll send you a postcard when we get can, can take you in at the uh, down at the uh, base, and uh, that's what happened. 
uh, I got a job at to San Diego at uh, uh, San Francisco uh, out at the uh, uh, sugar factory for about uh, a little over a month. And, and you guys, you guys won't believe this. They, they told us that uh, if we served a month with the Western Sugar Refinery, then we got a hundred dollar bonus. And uh, I worked right up, just up to the next day after I got my bonus when they had me a check when I, when I went back down to, to the base. And so I, I, I sent it to my mother so she could come down and see me off. Um, what was your most memorable part of the war? What was your most memorable part of the war? Uh, I don't. I don't. <clears throat> I don't have any mo most memorable. Uh, no, there's a lot of memorables, and and you just hear and there and things that. Uh, one thing that I. On the, on the nice side, uh, uh, I'm bored and you guys let me know. Uh, I, I, I wanted to tell about this. They had four cases of beer, cases of uh, beer for us guys. And I had a ship, and the ship came over with our beer. And uh, a lot of guys didn't drink it, a lot of them did. But uh, uh, we, uh, what was it on this side? Oh. They brought it in, and you should have seen the camp that night. Everybody was laughing, playing cards, having fun, selling some of their beer, giving some of their beer away, drinking some of their beer. And we weren't beer, a lot of us weren't, weren't beer drinkers. <clears throat> but we we were glad that the United States did that for us. Uh, the whole thing is a can. Uh, uh, one of the guys that handles the beer uh, dropped a dropped it someplace, and I was a recipient. I got it, and that night I was drinking a can of beer uh, before bedtime, and I began to hurt. I hurt my stomach, so I got on my side, and I hurt on my side. I got on my back, I was still hurting. What did I have? Say it. You know what I had? Yes. Tomain? Uh, I don't know. Tomain poison. That's what I had, and I, I ran down to the doctor, I said, I need some help. And the corpsman was there, but not the doctor. The doctor had left and gone somewhere. But the corpsman says, drink water, drink water, drink water. So I went back and I drank water all night. And I got up okay the next I didn't have so much pain in, in the morning. So the beer was a good thing, but it was bad for me. Hey, Dustin, how old were you when the war ended? How old were you at the end of the war? I was three years older than when I went in. So 21? Um, yeah. I was, uh, <coughs> uh, let's see, uh, I went in at 18, 19. Uh, I came in uh, back in 45, and uh, I went in in 40, last of 42. So I was about 18. Let's see, in China, I was 18. I was about 20, I think, when I landed. About 20. I spent uh, two and a half years over. What advice would you give uh, for, this, for the boys and girls who want to um, enlist in the armed services today? Talk to your mom and dad own judgment because some have a tendency to want to go military some don't want any touch of the military but a lot of the people that didn't want anything to do with the military uh, they had other important jobs that were just as good you know to, as far as winning the war and uh, but uh, you ask a question oh how long did you serve total how long did you serve total? Like your total time serving? I did what? How long were you in the military? Uh, a little over three years. Okay. 
Uh, did you have any way to communicate with the family when you're out? Yeah, I spent the two and a half years, and the other time was uh, in uh, boot camp and out at Camp Pendleton. And uh, uh, we, we uh, Camp Pendleton uh, was one of the jumping off places. We had uh, special studies there, and we had when then we went down to San Diego, and they had another facility there. It was for uh, uh, for us to stay there until the ship was ready to go, and so we uh, we hung around there and uh, and uh, played cards and uh, and uh, watched the movies. They set uh, they set movies up for us so we could watch them. Uh, otherwise, it would have got there are a whole a lot of barracks there, all over all over, but there was a going going out to see uh, from there, that's it. And uh, that's about, that's all I'm saying on that. <coughs> yes, I think he has a question over here. Or her, I can't tell. So, we're pretty much out of time. Unfortunately, they have other classes. Yes. Um, is there any last words you want to give them? Yes, there is. There, I've been thinking about it for two days. What what I want to tell them, uh, and, and and this seems like off to the side, not important, but I think it's terrifically important. Uh, this this thing of belonging to the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts, <clears throat> and uh, because there's so much they're talking about, so much good. Because if you're, if you're good and you're on the level, you're not going to end up behind bars. Who wants to who wants to go up there and, and, and look look out of a bar and have somebody else try to bother you or punch you around and everything? And forget it. Uh, be be nice with people. They'll be nice with you probably. And uh, just if, if you do that, uh, this is what I wanted to tell them tell the students uh, if it, I wanted to be, get that in too because it's, I was in Scouts for three years it made an impression on me and I came out we had all kinds of trailing going and uh, and we had a, a, a Scoutmaster that was a uh, uh, he had been in the first war and uh, he he taught us marching and, and all kinds of stuff and, uh, and it just uh, uh, this this thing is so important to uh, not let somebody get you into a situation to where you can't get out and it's it's crooked it's deceitful it's not according to God and that's it that's it. Uh, thank you.